Oh. Hi. It's Rebecca. I'm just here looking for a good book. Like maybe you like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Or maybe you love the Big Nate series. If you love those books, you're gonna love Max and the Midnights by Lincoln Pierce. Hey, that's the same author as the Big Nate guy. Cool. Let me tell you a little about it. Okay, so Max and the Midnights is a fun hybrid book. It's part graphic novel, part regular novel, very much like Diary of a Wimpy Kid or the Big Nate series. It's a fun and a silly read with an exciting story and some surprising twists. So this book takes place during the Middle Ages during the late 1300s. The main character, Max, travels with Uncle Budrick, a troubadour. Do you know what a troubadour is? A troubadour is a singer or entertainer who travels from town to town performing for the townspeople because back in the Middle Ages, there was no TV, no PlayStation, no internet, not even radio. This was the only way to stay entertained. While Max is supposed to follow in Uncle Budrick's footsteps and become a troubadour, what Max really wants is to be a knight. Max and Uncle Budrick's travels bring them to Uncle Budrick's home kingdom of Bijovia. Bijovia has changed since Uncle Budrick left, and now it's ruled by the evil King Ghastly. After Max causes some excitement in town, Uncle Budrick gets dragged off to be the king's personal entertainer. And given Uncle Budrick's lack of talent, Max knows that Uncle Budrick needs to be rescued. So with some help from his new friends and an old wizard, Max sets off to rescue Uncle Budrick and to help restore the kingdom of Bijovia to its former glory. And if you don't trust my opinion, maybe you'll listen to Big Nate. Here's a little excerpt of what he has to say about Max and the Midnights. This book has everything. Action, adventure, thrills, and tons of hilarious jokes. Roar, there's even a genuine dragon. So give Max and the Midnights a try. Hi, Rebecca again. My next pick is the Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian, The Fuzzy Apocalypse by Jonathan Messenger. Do you even know what apocalypse means? Well, sometimes it means the end of the world, but it can also mean a big disaster. You can decide for yourself what you think the author meant in this futuristic space adventure. Finn Caspian, the first kid born in space, lives on the Marlow 280 Interplanetary Space Station. He is the chief detective of Troop 301, which is a group of kid explorers. The members are Abigail, she's the captain, Vale is the sergeant at arms, Elias is the chief technologist, and Foggy is Finn's adventure-loving robot. Troop 301 is out for exploration when aliens force their spaceship onto their planet, and their planet is about to explode. The aliens seem nice, nice enough, but the head alien has mind control powers and is blaming a cute bunny for the planet's problems. The bunny seems small and harmless, but it's hard to know who to trust. Combine that with a power struggle between the troops members and you have all the suspension action you need for a fun read. If you enjoy the, this adventure, book two, The Accidental Volcano is coming to the library soon. Or you can also try The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian, the science fiction podcast for kids, which the books are based on. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to start with episode one. I hope you'll give The Fuzzy Apocalypse a try. Thanks. Hi, I'm Miss Bailey. And I want to share with you the graphic novel series, The Investigators by John Patrick Green. The Investigators are a super spy duo named Mango and Brash, and they are unlike any spies you've ever seen before. And they're also a little bit more clueless probably than uh, most spies that you've seen before. And if you haven't noticed, they happen to be alligators. 
So in their very first mission together, Mango and Brash uh, have not one, but two mysteries to solve. The very first has to do with the mysterious disappearance of a famous baker, or like master chef, um, who actually, it turns out, has been kidnapped. They stumble upon a second crime, which has to do with the theft of a mysterious device called the thingamabob. Now, Mango and Brash are all about saving the world from the forces of evil. They have all kinds of tech gadgets and wacky disguises and a very official, super fast way of traveling, which is that they flush themselves down the toilet. Yes, the toilet. It gets them to where they need to go, I guess. Uh, so through all this mystery and mayhem, uh, Mango and Brash are seeking to find the perpetrators of the crimes going on. Will these gators crack the code and save the day? Now, I just want to mention that if you like this series, Dogman by Dave Pilkey, you might want to try this out. And if you end up liking this book one, um, please try the uh, sequel, which is Take the Plunge. And book three is going to be called Off the Hook and should be out hopefully uh, towards the end of February. I hope you enjoy The Investigators. Hi, it's Miss Bailey, and I want to talk about time travel. Uh, the Time Jumper series by Wendy Mass is full of fun and adventure. And Wendy Mass has other books that we have in our collection at the library, and she's a pretty uh, popular author. Uh, we first meet the main characters, Chase and Ava, when they're at a flea market um, in book one, Stealing the Sword. And a flea market is an outdoor market, typically, uh, where you can sell um, or buy secondhand or used items. And Chase and Ava are there because their parents happen to be artists that uh, make art out of found objects. So both kids get permission to roam about the flea market, which they are super excited about. There's all kinds of cool booths and uh, art and things to go look at. And they also happen to have a few bucks to spend. So again, they're super excited to walk around. And both of them happen to be drawn to a uh, suitcase, a strange looking suitcase at the same time. And once the suitcase is theirs, they realize it is no ordinary suitcase. It is full of very strange objects. Uh, and when Chase accidentally touches one, the two uh, siblings are sent spinning. Once the room or the world stops spinning, Chase and Ava realize they are no longer in their time period. They have gone back in time um, and happened to be at King Arthur's castle. King Arthur was a legend from Great Britain, medieval Great Britain. They are in his castle and in order to get home, they will have to save the king. However, they have to understand what it means to save the king, how do they go about that, and can they do it before they run out of time? So if you want more excitement and you like that book, um, the sequel is Escape from Egypt, where of course they go back into uh, ancient Egypt. There's also one where they go into the future, like during the time of uh, robots, spaceships, that sort of thing. There's also one where they go way back to when uh, it was the time of the dinosaurs. So if you love adventure and all the craziness that can ensue when that happens, you will definitely want to check this series out and happy time traveling. Hi, Mrs. Mendelssohn here, I'm going to talk to you about some cool reads for winter. And this first one is called Kalan and the Stink Ink, and it's by Karen Audio. And this is, Kalan is a sea otter, and it's told from his point of view. Um, he's ready to leave his mother. He's full grown, and uh, when male sea otters are full grown, they leave the, the pod that they're in, and they go and find uh, other male uh, sea otters, and they form their own reef that way. And as he sets out to find them, uh, he has some adventures. He refers to, humans are referred to as furless ones. And uh, during the story, they encounter an oil spill, which is the, the stink ink mentioned in the title. Um, and again, because things are from Kalan's point of view, he has to kind of try and figure out what he's talking about. It's not, not difficult, but you can figure it out. Um, 
and sea otters will always will constantly groom themselves so they have to make sure that their fur is clean that there's no crumbs or bits of meat or uh, that they're eating stuck on it so when they swim into the uh, the oil spill they can't get clean it's toxic um, and if they can't uh, keep their fur clean they can't uh, get the air inside to insulate them and then they can freeze to death um, Kalan and some others uh, sea otters are rescued uh, by a sea otter rescue group and this basically tells about his adventures and uh, how he survives it. Okay, it's a quick read. It's only it's a little over 100 pages and there's some information at the end about that. My next book is a graphic novel called Squitting Around Fish Feud and it's by Kevin Sherry some bright pictures in there. So squidding around, the two main characters are Squizzard and Toothy. Squizzard is the squid and Toothy is a uh, great white shark. Squitter, Squizzard and Toothy are best friends. Uh, Squizzard can be kind of bossy, he wants to be in charge, so he's a bit selfish. Um, and then one day Toothy ditches him because he's tired of being bossed around. Uh, so Squizzard is trying to find a way to win Toothy back. He's trying different things, but he has to basically learn not to just focus on himself, but to think about others. Uh, and then there are fish facts included along with uh, when each different kind of sea life is encountered. They'll give you some information about that. I didn't mark off the pages, but again, there's some information at the end as well. Okay. Grand, nice, quick graphic novel for those of you who are big fans of graphic novels, and I hope you enjoy this one. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Sarah from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library. I'm here to talk to you guys about one of my recommendations for third and fourth grade readers, and that is gonna be Cucumber Quest by Gigi DG. So the very first book in the series is called The Donut Kingdom, and this series follows the adventure of two bunny siblings named Cucumber, and his little sister Almond. So in our story, the world's not in a good place. There's an evil queen rising to power who's determined to get her hands on the forces of destruction and use them for what? Well, world domination, obviously. <laughs> so Cucumber has been chosen by destiny and Oracle comes to him and tells him, guess what kid, you're our hero. But he's not too excited about this. He doesn't want to be a hero. He wants to go to school and he wants to learn how to do magic. But since everyone's determined he's got to be the hero, mom kicks him out of the house and sends him packing. Well, meanwhile, his sister Almond is way more into the hero business. So she sneaks out and ends up following along to try to help Cucumber out on his quest. But the two siblings are off to a rough start. See, they have to go collect a weapon called the Dream Sword. It's supposed to be the only weapon that can defeat the evil queen. So when they get to the Dream Sword though, they find out it's already been stolen by a thief named Saturday which isn't too grand. And to top it all off, there was rumors going around that the evil queen may have already succeeded in summoning her greatest weapon yet, the Nightmare Knight. All right, so this hero business isn't turning out so great after all, but our heroes are determined. Bunny, a cucumber and almond are going to save the day no matter what it takes, and why not? <laughs> so this is a really fun and silly series if you're a fan of adventures, if you're a fan of humor, I definitely recommend this. A lot of the humor really reminds me of the Captain Underpants series, and similarly, it also reminds me of the Adventure Time TV show, a lot of the comedy that I see, especially in the author's illustrations, they're just fantastic, and the characters are great, and you'll be really, really sucked into the world of Cucumber and Almond and their quest to save the land of Dreamside. So I definitely recommend trying out Cucumber Quest. The next book I want to talk to you guys about is called Cake in Space, a not-so-impossible tale by Philip Reeve and Sarah McIntyre. So if you are familiar with Pugs of the Frozen North, this is another one of those not-so-impossible tales. Uh, Pugs of the Frozen North was one of the Nutmeg nominees just a couple of years back, and this is another one in that series. All the books, though, are standalones, and they are extremely hilarious. This one just happens to follow the story of 10-year-old Astra. So Astra's family is moving to a brand new planet called Nova Mundi. And Nova Mundi is not exactly right next door to Earth. This one will take about 199 years to travel to, which is a pretty long time. 
but while they travel they'll be sleeping in these special pods that will keep them kind of frozen over time and robots will drive their ship so that's a pretty good deal and nobody will age while they're in these pods either so while they are traveling along though before they start going before they begin their journey Aster decides she wants to have one last snack before she goes to bed for about 200 years so she goes to the robot's kitchen and she finds a machine there called the Namotron. And this machine basically makes any food that anyone on the ship could want. So first she asks for a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie, which is pretty easy. And the Namatron makes her a cookie. That was pretty good. But then she has another idea. What if she took a snack with her to bed? So when she wakes up in 200 years, she'll have something yummy to eat first. So she asks it to make a cake and not just any cake, but the ultimate cake. Well, the Namatron starts working on her request, but then it just gets kind of stuck. The screen just says working and it doesn't respond to her anymore. So she thinks, oh, oops, I might have broken it. So she heads off and she goes to sleep in her pod. Well, about a hundred years pass and all of a sudden she's woken up. Have they made it early? Doesn't look like it. The ship is failing because for the past 100 years, the Namatron has been still working on her request and trying to make the ultimate cake. And it's definitely succeeded in making something. It's made living monster cakes that are slowly destroying the ship. Well, now it's up to Astra. She's the only person awake on the whole spaceship. Can she stop these killer cupcakes? Or is this a recipe for disaster? Definitely check out Cakes in Space, a not so impossible tale. Hi, I'm Mr. Wan from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library, and I'm here to tell you about the book, The Stray and the Strangers by Stephen Hyten. In this book, this dog here on the front cover is afraid of all the other stray dogs and cats. So she wanders off up the hill. And at the top of the hill, she finds a camp. And the people that run the camp take her in, name her Canella, because canela means cinnamon and she has such beautiful cinnamon colored fur and they give her a warm place to stay. But in this camp, people are coming and going and canela doesn't understand why. The owner of the camp comes and sees that canela is there and is very angry because pets are not supposed to be at the camp. So canela runs off. Will Canella ever find her way back? Will she be safe? And will she ever find a forever home? Read about Canella, her adventures, her fear, and the love that she receives from the people who run the camp and who come and go from the camp. I'm here to tell you about another book called Lucy Lopez, Coding Star. It's part of the After School Superstar series written by Claudia Mills. In this book, Lucy and her sister are good friends. Lucy's in the third grade, Elena's in the fifth grade. They spend a lot of time together when they're not in school, playing, making up their own games, until Elena decides to take a coding class. And now Elena wants to spend all her free time in, at the family computer practicing what she learned in the coding class. So Lucy thinks about it and decides if she takes the coding class as well, maybe they could start doing coding together and have fun again. So she goes to the class and when Elena finds out she is not happy, so Lucy has to decide if she should stop going to coding or if she should continue. The thing of it is, is Lucy is having a really good time. She's meeting new friends like Boogie and Nolan and Nixie and Vera, and she really, really likes coding. If she stays with the coding class, will that ruin her relationship with Elena? And if she drops out, will she be missing out on an opportunity to learn something really fun? So she has a decision to make. Read and find out what she does. Does she stick with coding? And if she does, does it get in the way of her relationship with Elena? 
If she drops out of coding, does she lose her new friends? Read and find out what happens with Lucy and her coding. And if you enjoy this book, the other ones in the series that the library has is Nixie Ness Cooking Star and Vera Vance Comic Star. And I'm sure there's more coming. So take a chance on one or all of them, read them and have fun.